Welcome back to ACS Part Two. In this section, we'll discuss how to use the ECG in a patient who you're suspecting of an ACS. This is not a comprehensive review of how to read an EKG. ECG is the cornerstone diagnosis for ACS. Keep in mind that if your first ECG did not show any abnormalities and the patient is still having symptoms, we often repeat it. This is a normal 12-lead ECG. When we're approaching a 12-lead ECG, we often start with rate, rhythm, axis, and so on. Once we make sure those are okay, we're going to move on to more specific details. These specific details include SD elevation and SD depression with or without T-wave inversion. In the patient that we're worried about acute coronary syndrome, SD elevation means an acute infarct. You can also get ST elevation in patients without an infarct. They include benign early repolarization, which should not be giving patient chest pain, a left bundle branch block, which you may or may not be able to find out if it's new or old, LVH or LV aneurysm, which should not be giving patient chest pain. And the last reason for ST elevation is pericarditis. That will give patient chest pain. However, we'll look at the criteria to decide whether this is infarction versus pericarditis. For now, let's look at ST elevation in patients with acute myocardial infarction and learn their patterns first. Acute myocardial infarct follows two rules on the ECG. One, it's territorial. Second, there are reciprocal changes. We'll go through them one by one. First, territorial. Each coronary artery and its branches supply specific area to the heart. If one of the arteries or the branches is blocked, it will make sense that all the territory of the heart that is being supplied by this branch will not be getting oxygen, that the whole territory is being affected. And so when we're looking at ST elevation, we want to look at them in territories. Specifically, we want to look at the different territories of the heart. On the 12 lead ECG, inferior part of the heart is looked at by lead 2, 3, and AVF. Lateral part of the heart is looked at by leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6. V1, V2, V3, and V4 comprises the anterior part of the heart. This is important when looking at patient with potential ACS. In terms of coronary artery supplies, the inferior part of the heart is mostly supplied by the right coronary artery. The anterior portion of the heart is being supplied by the left anterior descending artery. The lateral wall of the heart is supplied by the branches of the left anterior descending artery and the left circumflex arteries. If we see ST elevations on the 12 lead ECG, we want to ask, do these elevations belong to the same territory of the heart? Let's see a few examples. We'll focus on ST elevations for now. Which leads do you see ST elevations? Lead V1, and that's the baseline. V2, V3, 4, and 5 are fairly obvious. Do you see ST elevation anywhere else? There is a very subtle ST elevation in AVL. So the question is, do the ST elevations belong to the same territories? And if so, which ones? They include the anterior territory and two of the leads in the lateral territory. Therefore, this is an acute enterolateral myocardial infarction. Let's look at this ECG. You can pause here to decide where the ST elevations are and whether it belongs to the same territory. The ST elevations are in 2, 3, and AVF. That is the inferior portion of the heart. Therefore, this is an acute inferior ST elevation myocardial infarction. What about this ECG? Again, just look at the ST elevations and decide whether they belong to the same territories. There are ST elevations in multiple leads. You see them in the anterior portion of the heart. 
Pay special attention to the way the ST elevations look like in the interior leads. You see that they have those rounded tops. These are also known as tombstones and are particularly worrisome for infarcts. Where else do you see ST elevations? You see them in the lateral leads as well. You can also see tombstones STs in those leads as well. This is an acute anterolateral ST elevation MI. Every time you see ST elevations belonging to the same territory, you have to think there is a blocked vessel, and therefore there is an infarction. The second part of an ST elevation MI has to do with reciprocal changes. It refers to the fact that if you have ST elevation going on in one territory of the heart, the ECG leads corresponding to the opposite territory should show ST depression almost like a mirror image of the ST elevation. This is a schematic of a heart. You can see that the lateral wall of the heart is directly opposite to the inferior wall of the heart. And the anterior wall of the heart is opposite to the posterior wall of the heart, which will be behind the slide. The rules of reciprocality in ST elevation means that if there is an ST elevation MI in one of the territories of the heart, the opposite territory should show ST depression, picking up the mirror changes. Therefore, in a patient with ST elevation in, say, the inferior leads, the lateral leads should be showing ST depression. And if there are ST elevation in the lateral leads, there should be ST depression in the inferior leads. These two territories always reciprocate with each other. The same vein also goes for anterior and posterior leads. That is, if there is ST elevation in the anterior leads, if we do posterior leads, we will see ST depression. These two territories always reciprocate with each other. Let's go through some examples. Here, I want you to pick out the ST elevation and the ST depression. Where are the ST elevations? They're in the inferior leads. They belong to the same territory. Do you see the ST depressions? Where are they? They're in one NAVL, and the depression in one is very subtle. That corresponds to the lateral leads. Therefore, this is a acute, inferior ST elevation MI. What about this one? We've seen this one before. You notice that there are ST elevation in the anterior leads and the lateral leads. Do you see any ST depression? You can see ST depressions in 2, 3, and AVF corresponding to the inferior part of the heart. That makes sense because the inferior part of the heart reciprocates with the lateral ST changes. What about changes in the posterior leads? Well, in a standard 12 lead EKG, we don't do posterior leads. If we were to do them using a 15 lead, we would be able to see ST depression in the posterior leads. Let's try this one. Where are the ST elevations? In the inferior leads? And some in the anterior leads, a bit more subtle. This time, where are the ST depressions? We expect them to be in the lateral leads since the inferior part reciprocates with the lateral. Are there ST depression? Yeah. Yes, there are some in 1 in AVL. Therefore, you can explain all the EKG changes with regard to the STs by an antero inferior ST elevation MI with reciprocal changes in the lateral leads. How about this one? Where do you see the ST elevations? There are some in the inferior leads. They're very subtle. Do you see any ST depressions? There are some in V1 to V4 in the anterior leads. Are these reciprocal changes? We know that the inferior wall reciprocates with the lateral, not with the anterior. And therefore, the anterior ST depression must be coming from something else. It can either be ischemic changes, that we'll discuss later, the second possibility is that we are looking at reciprocal changes in the anterior leads as a reflection from posterior lead ST elevation MI. And therefore, this is one of the reasons we would do a 15-lead ECG, 
it will be looking for posterior leads. To do posterior leads, EKG leads are put in the back part of the body, just underneath the scapula. It is usually denoted by V7, V8, and V9. Often in a 15 lead, only V8 and V9 are being performed. This is what the patient with the ST depression in V1 to V4 look like with V7, V8, and V9. Do you see the ST changes? You see the ST elevation in V7 to V9, the posterior part of the heart, and that corresponds exactly to the ST depressions in V1 to V4. The anterior and the posterior part of the heart reciprocates. Therefore, the patient is having an acute inferior posterior ST elevation MI. And we wouldn't have picked that up had we not done the 15 lead. After we look for ST elevation and seeing whether they are territorial or reciprocal on the 12 lead ECG, we then look for ST depression or T wave inversion in patients with potential ACS. The difference between ST depression is that it denotes ischemia. It is not territorial or reciprocal like infarcts. Let's look at this ECG. Do you see ST depression? You kind of see them everywhere. It's not territorial and not reciprocal. If there are no ST depression, the second thing we look for is T wave inversion or flip T's. Where do you see the flip T's in this ECG? They're in multiple leads. If they are new, then we have to be very concerned about ischemia. In summary, we talk about how to approach the EKG of a patient suspicious of having ACS. Remember that we look for ST elevation to see whether they are territorial and reciprocal. If there is no ST elevation, we will look for ST depression and T wave inversion. In the next section, we'll discuss how to use other diagnostic modality in the patient with ACS. Thank you for watching.